Five amino one MQ. Why are people getting a little excited about this? Even though it's been around for quite a while, um, I feel like now people are looking at the new weight loss peptides and things like this, and they're kind of doing a little bit of their own research. And 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 substances like five amino one MQ are are coming into in, into sight. So five amino one MQ, what does it do? What does it potentially do? So if you go and there's a there's a link in the notes to this video. Um, if you look at the potential benefits of five amino one MQ, it's kind of it sounds too good to be true, you know. Oh, it's going to reduce the size of the fat cell. It's going to inhibit lipogenesis, the creation of new fat, even if you're in a calorie expenditure. It's going to reduce inflammation. It's going to reduce your triglycerides. It's it potentially can reduce your LDL. It, it's got there's all sorts of studies linking it with cancer, which I'm not, you know, I have no authority to talk about that. Um, do your own research. Uh, improving uh, age-related muscle loss. I mean, all these things. I mean, it, it really does quite an exciting list, but like I say, almost too good to be true. So how does it do it? Well, potentially, potentially. So 5-amino-1-MQ works by inhibiting NNMT. And NNMT is nicotinamide and N methyltransferase. And NNMT is an enzyme that helps the body manage energy and fat. So it's like a switch that can slow down or speed up how your body burns calories and stores fat. As we get older, NNMT levels increase, which can make it harder to burn fat and easier to gain weight. And this is one of the reasons why metabolism may slow down as we age. So how does NMT, NNMT cause all these problems? So NNMT helps change nicotinamide, which is a form of B3, into a new substance called 1-methylnicotinamide. One, uh, one and 1-methylnicotinamide has been linked to um, metabolic health and aging issues. So if we inhibit... Well, what does, what does NNMT do? Okay, so in short, NNMT becomes more active as we get older, and it can lead to a slower metabolism and more fat storage, affecting how our bodies manage energy. Um, NNMT increases with age, and this has several metabolic, of course, it's several metabolic changes. So uh, potentially a slow metabolism, NNMT activity increases, it can slow down how efficiently your body burns calories. Increased fat storage, higher NNMT levels are linked to a greater fat storage, especially around the belly and in the liver. You don't want fat in the liver, guys. Um, energy imbalances. So with more NNMT, your body becomes less efficient to producing energy, which may cause fatigue or just like low levels of energy as we get older. And also increased risk of disease. So the rise in NNMT with age has been associated with the higher risk of conditions like type 2 diabetes, fatty liver disease, and, and some cancers. Um, so as NNMT increases with age, it contributes to a slow metabolism, weight gain, higher risk of age-related diseases. Um, because NNMT influences how the body stores fat, when NMT levels are high, it slows down metabolism and promotes the accumulation of fat, um, especially in the tissues, like I said, the liver and adipose tissue. And that can lead to uh, higher triglycerides, which is a type of fat in the blood. And uh, because of the accumulation of fat in the liver, it can it, it can cause um, be, may contribute to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Um, and also because of this disruption of lipids in the body, it can actually potentially lead to elevated LDL cholesterol. So triglyceride, higher triglycerides combined with higher LDL, yeah, both of which uh, point to a higher risk of, of heart disease. Inflammation, uh, MNMT promotes uh, chronic low-grade inflammation, especially in fat tissues and you know, this this is linked to a whole host of, of age-related diseases. And then there's NMT in muscle. And this is when I, several years ago, got pretty excited about it. Um, so 5-amino-1-MQ, uh, because it inhibits NMT, is meant to help with uh, age-related muscle issues. So now I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, why is that? 
So higher levels of NNMT activity divert energy towards fat storage, leaving less energy available for muscle maintenance and repair. So this imbalance can cause muscle tissue to break down faster than it can be rebuilt, leading to gradual muscle loss. Um, also, NNMT's increase might impair the body's ability to repair and generate muscle cells. As people age, muscle recovery after an injury tends to take a little bit longer anyway, and it tends to slow down. Um, and NNMT pathways are thought to shift energy away from muscle generation and more towards fat accumulation. Um, also, NNMT promotes fat storage. Uh, some of that fat can infiltrate muscles, and that, that is called ectopic fat. So ectopic fat is where fat is where it shouldn't be. So it's like if, when you have fat in your liver, you're not meant to have fat in your liver. You, the liver is meant to make fat. It's not meant to store fat. So fat in your liver would be ectopic fat. So excess fat stored in muscle is also ectopic fat. Um, and it really leads to reduced muscle quality because fat deposits in and around muscle reduce their ability to contract effectively. And again, NNMT's elevated levels um, contribute to chronic inflammation, which can ne negatively affect muscle mass and function. Um, so you can see this increase in NNMT uh, can be problematic. So who, who is more prone to having elevated NNMT? Well, for one, because it's so much linked to energy and fat accumulation, then people that are uh, obese people and people with metabolic syndrome, so you know that's high blood pressure, high blood sugars, abnormal cholesterol, they're all more likely to have elevated NMT um, because it's heavily involved in fat storage. Uh, people that are dealing with inflammation, uh, autoimmune disease are more likely to be dealing with it. And just simply getting older, you know, um, because we're getting older, NMT levels are increasing, and that is partially partly uh, attributed because of the the hormonal loss. So in women, the perimenopause and menopausal period, so that's now forties and fifties, bring about hormonal changes such as you know declining estrogen, which are linked to increased fat storage and therefore increased NMT levels. In men, testosterone levels also begin to drop around the 40s and 50s, contributing to similar metabolic shifts and the potential rise of NNMT. So NNMT activity generally begins in, in the 40s and 50s, and it's uh, as part of the body's natural aging process, which includes you know, slow metabolism, hormonal changes, fat accumulation, and increased inflammation. But, but the exact age really depends on lifestyle factors, genetics, and obviously an individual's health. Now, there's no actual test to take. So you can't go and test your NNMT levels, no direct test. But if you're pretty attuned to your body, you know, a few signs might point at, you know, point at uh, increase NMT. So, you know, if you're exercising the same, but, you know, the, the, the weight's creeping on, even though you're pretty diligent with your nutrition and, um, and exercise, um, maybe you're, you're accumulating belly fat. Now, there can be many reasons for that. NMT is just one of them. Uh, fatigue, that low level of fatigue that you haven't dealt with before, that can definitely be it. And um, reduced muscle tone. So when the muscle quality just isn't as good, um, if you're in tune with your body, you know when that's happening. And these can all point toward NNMT. Now, NNMT is not going to be the, the only thing responsible for that, but that little cluster combined with age um, may point to NNMT. So this is why people are getting pretty excited about 5-amino-1-MQ, because 5-amino-1-MQ... Um, does inhibit uh, NNMT. Now, only done on animal studies, um, but they, they had some pretty remarkable studies with an, on animals. But it's it's, it's an exciting. Um, we're, we're 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 in a site an exciting time with um, more, different modalities and products and and supplements that we can take, and the fact that we can even pinpoint these pathways which can explain to us some of the frustrations that we're dealing with in you know midlife and beyond now what else can you do so you know um five we know one mq yeah um more information link link in the show notes um 
also metformin and berberine are, are p potentials to um, to deal with NNMT, but also because the NNMT is involved in methylation, supporting the body's methylation processes might help. So things like um, um, B9, which is uh, folate, B12, uh, betanine, th these nutrients all help support methylation, which can prevent maybe the over-reliance on NNMT. Uh, and inflammation drives NNMT. So uh, anti-inflammatory diets, uh, stress reduction, so sufficient sleep, these can all reduce NNMT's role in promoting fat storage and this metabolic dysfunction that we're talking about. Um, <clears throat> yeah, metformin. Uh, well, so metformin is commonly used for managing type 2 diabetes, but it has been studied for its effect on cellular energy regulation. So some re research is suggesting that metformin may indirectly influence NNMT activity by improving insulin sensitivity. And along the same lines, berberine, which... Right, love berberine, natural compound that's gained attention for its ability to improve glucose metabolism, metabolism works fantastic. And it, it, again, it might have an indirect effect on NNMT by improving insulin sensitivity and reducing inflammation. Inflammation is a big thing. Um, so that's why, um, for go full circle, that's why we can get pretty excited about 5-amino-1-MQ. Uh, Still classed as a, a research compound, but you can see why people get so excited about it. And I just wanted, for the purpose of this video, to try and um, cobble together an explanation of, of why it potentially works so well. Because again, if you go to the link in, in the notes, when you read the potential benefit, it's crazy. And you're like, oh yeah, it does all that. It's like this magic pill. But then when you see, it is because it inhibits this one pathway, this one pathway. Um, so that's, uh, that's NNMT. I hope you found it interesting.